What's up guys, GT Gamer here and welcome back to Train Simulator 2017. And I'm in Brighton at the moment, it's quite a nice station, big massive arch things on it, nice roof. And we're in the class, what is this, a class 375 uh, to London Victoria. I did try and get the 377 which I believe they use more common on this route. But for some reason my controller just would not work, so that wasn't going to happen which is unfortunate. But I chose stormy weather, even though it doesn't look that stormy at the moment, not quite sure why that is. So let's go first person, and now it's raining inside. I don't quite get that, I think that might be a glitch. First thing we need to do is turn on the wipers, which is left on the D-pad. Is there multiple speeds? Uh, no. Well, they probably are, but that's the one we're using. And we need to put the HUD on. Uh, I like it minimized, I don't like the big one. We need to put it in forwards and release the brake and apply some throttle. So we're going from Brighton, it's about 50 miles all the way to there, which is London Victoria, platform 17, shows how big that station is. And you can see down here on the speedometer, there's a little red mark next to the 100. I think that's because the top speed of this train is 100 miles per hour. What other controls have we got? I need to keep an eye on the speed. Let's give it 20% throttle. So one thing that is different about this train, I know a few trains have it, is we have a combined throttle and brake. You pull it back to accelerate, push it forwards to stop. Sorry, I just need to control the train. And we got the reverser there, which then forwards, the master key, which is like a car key basically turns it on and off, you can't drive it without that. And that's pretty much all I know about this train. The DRA, that is the driver reminder appliance, which basically you press that and it won't let the train accelerate because uh, basically if you're at a station or at a red light, you put that on just so you don't accidentally accelerate. And I'll go through controls a bit more, but first I want to have a little bit of a look outside. So this our train is 10 carriages. Ooh, look at that, we've got another one here. That's cool. I didn't know whether there was any uh, other, what's the word I'm looking for? Any AI trains on this route. So I was a little bit skeptical about making it. Look at that, we're matching the train speed. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I didn't know if there was any AI, so I was a bit skeptical about making this, but I decided to in the end, and I'm glad I did. It looks like there are AI trains, but this is probably one of, if not the busiest route in Britain for trains. So I doubt it's going to have that level of AI, but it should have a fair bit, hopefully. That's what I'm hoping for. It is definitely going to get incredibly busy up towards London. We're going through what the busiest train station in Europe by train numbers. I think it's like one arrives every 13 seconds or something. It's insane. I'll show you that when we get up there. But we should probably start accelerating. I literally just noticed that. We're going to not stop at most stations like Preston, we're not going to stop there. Basically if I see a town and I think this is a pretty big town, we're going to stop. That's basically how it works. I don't know the schedule of this train, I don't really do much homework in preparation for these videos, I just jump in and do it when I fancy it, or when i got a bit of spare time. But we're just going to stop anywhere that looks interesting. So we've got three tracks at the moment, I think most of this is four track, not sure. There's a bit of two, I think most of it's four, and at the end we'll get like an insane amount of tracks, like 12 tracks, 17 platforms in London Victoria that I know of, because we're going to platform 17, which probably is one of the last ones, so it'll be about 17 or 18 platforms I would imagine, but that's a pretty insane number of platforms. I must say, I do like this train. It reminds me of the Class 185, and I've been on them, they're very, mm, I was going to say they're very comfortable, they're not, but they're quite classic, they're very common on the UK rail network. We're coming up to 70 now, we're on a double track session, but I do like this train, it is like a modern version of the Class 158, it's pretty cool, it's got the same sort of front end shape, same sort of design, basic design, it's just longer, oh, speeding, sorry, sorry Mr. Train Man. That's what I'm going to call the dispatcher. So we got a lovely green light. I don't. I doubt we're behind anything. This is a free run. A free run. Free roam scenario. 
I just set it up. So we probably haven't got any traffic to deal with. Let's hope not, at least. And we got to try balance the throttle. I want to stay at exactly 75 until we hit the 90 zone. This is a very fast route. It's pretty much arrow straight all the way up to London now. So we probably can hit 90, even 100 miles per hour in places. I don't know. I haven't done this route for over a few years now. Well, I try to find a good throttle level. Between 20 and 39% seems good. So I'm going to keep it about that. When we get too fast, just drop it down. I have to remember which button's which. Coming up on a 90 now. We're in a little valley. That's a little bit. We don't see that every day. A nice little valley. Sorry, I got the hiccups. Big bridge. They probably dug this valley specifically for the train tracks. I can't imagine this is a natural valley. But it's still pretty cool. Nice attention to detail. We had a little bit of lag spike then. I don't know what that's about. This track does seem to be relatively intensive on the... Probably the processor or the graphics card. The frame rate's fairly stable. We're getting 55 now, but it does occasionally drop down to 40, if not lower. Like, as you saw then, the frame rate was probably about 6 for half a second. It does spike sometimes, but, you know, it's a, it's a detailed route, so I can I can live with a little bit of lag. I can, I can certainly deal with that. Like, there, just drop down to 23 frames a second. Right, we can accelerate now. Why am I dawdling? It's because I'm not paying attention looking at the frame rates. Up in the top left. Ooh! averaging more than 60 now it's probably because we're coming up to a tunnel so it doesn't have to load that much far ahead I don't know that's just guesswork into this tunnel I don't know how long this tunnel is it's annoying how some routes mark the tunnels others don't I do like to know how long a tunnel is there is one place in this route I know about a little bit of history I cannot remember what it's called but there's a tunnel or it, at least it used to be a tunnel and basically they knocked the top of it off so now you just got this little valley to go through and I don't know why they did that it used to be a tunnel at one point but then for some reason they just locked the top off got rid of all the earth and turned it into like a gully for the train to run, to run through it's got like retaining walls on each side so we've got a green signal here we can't be in the tunnel much longer because we're coming up on a platform a station hassock I've never heard of that. It's down. Brighton's on the south coast. You probably knew that. I don't know if you did. Let's just have a look at the map quickly. So we're all the way down here. And you can see it's pretty straight most of the way up. There's a few turns and whatnot, but it's fairly straight. Look at London. Look at this range here. This is Clapham Junction, that very busy station I was telling you about. That's just insanely busy. Then we got... I think Waterloo is around here somewhere, London Waterloo, and we're going up here to London Victoria. And look at that, look how many platforms this has, 70, 19 platforms, wow, that's a lot. And that's where we're going, I don't know what that is, oh this is East Croydon, that's a really big depot there, that's quite a complicated junction. And Brighton, where we came from, is just down by here. And we are all the way, where are we? We're by here somewhere. There we are. All the way down close to the end of the track. Oh, speeding. Speeding a lot. That's not good. Probably should have put it in neutral before I started going into the map and yakking on so much. Coming up on Burgess Hill. I'm going to stop at Burgess Hill because I think this does stop at Burgess Hill. I've heard of it, definitely. It's a... I think it's pretty big. I pretty sure this train would stop here so I'm just gonna put it on 33% throttle uh, a break even the joined what's it called conjoined throttle and brake whatever you'd call it combined throttle and brake catches me out a fair bit because I think I'm in neutral like just not accelerating or braking it turns out I got the emergency brake on or something stupid like that right we're coming up on the platform now I think we're slowing down at a fairly decent rate down to 50 now. I wonder if the speed limit will ever go up to 100. I'm not sure it does on this route. I think 90 is the max. Right, let's just coast. Actually, no. Let's keep braking down to about 35. And then when we hit 35, we'll decide whether to coast or not. So, release the brakes. 
Yeah, let's just coast into the platform. I was expecting something bigger, because Burgess Hill, I'm pretty sure Burgess Hill is a big town. Because I've heard of it, and my geography skills aren't brilliant. It hurts southeast of England. Don't know much about it. As I said in the last video, I very rarely go there, other than to go to Hastings. Right, we're going to have to stop right down the end, because this is a plumbing long train. Right, we need to brake a bit more. Not sure where the end of the platform is. Whoa, that was a big jolt then. It's probably... We need to stop underneath this... Whatever it is. The thing going over the track. We need to brake a bit more. Ooh, overshoot. That was an emergency brake then. Didn't mean to do that. Ooh, just a bit too far. Not bad, though. Not bad. Right, outside view. And we, let's go away from this underground thing. Very small platform. And we need to open the doors. Will you let me open the doors? I bet you won't. Damn, that's annoying. Oh, randomly pop in person. Pops in. Right. Come on, outside view. Front doors didn't open. Apparent. Ah, oh, God knows. I I missed it completely because the camera was being stupid. And go for it. 100% throttle. <laughs> Accelerate off the line. Make all the passengers spill their crumbets and their coffee. Why not? Have a bit of fun now and again. You can't play this game absolutely perfectly and enjoy it. Like some people, like I, I play this game. I find it fairly, I find it quite fun. I gotta admit. But I mess around. I go, ooh, I'll do that. I'll do this. I'll do this. But I've seen videos where people just go, right. This is the reverser. This is that. This is that. And they talk you through everything. They start the train, drive everything perfectly. They can't go more than one mile an hour over the speed limit. And I think that just takes the fun out of it. It's like flight simulation. If you have a flight simulator, you have to do a barrel roll. I can't be the only one that thinks that. Like, you see these things, let's do a cold and dark start, request taxi permission, and they, they talk you through things which aren't even implemented, like air traffic control. And it's just like, dude, seriously, just take the plane off, do it fairly realistically, obviously you've got to take off on the runway, and then just have a bit of fun. You can't just go, right, we'll go to 30,000 feet, and we'll wait there for one hour, 60 minutes. One hour, 60 minutes. That's two hours. One and three quarter hours, and then we'll start a descent. It's like, dude, you can't just sit there and watch the world travel by very, very slowly and have fun doing it. It's just, like, I, I'm fairly good at not getting bored, but that would bore me. I gotta be fair. Just cruising at the same altitude, the same speed, basically doing nothing, the occasional correction, it's just, no, just do a barrel roll, fly through a building, do something fun. Anyway, enough rambling. <laughs> One thing I do find really odd about this game is if I use the keyboard to change camera, then one is inside and two is outside. But if I use the controller, I'll assume this is one. The inside view, that's two, that's three, that's four, that's five, that's six, and finally we get to the outside view, like six presses you have to do, use. But on the keyboard it's just number two. Like why can't, like surely this is the second most common view for a rail simulator. I would imagine it is pretty common. So why make it the last one? Let's toot as we go past. Oh, that's cool. It's a two-tone horn. Uh, oops, speeding. That'll do. That'll do, pig. 39%. 62 will probably accelerate this. Yeah. So let's go between 39 and 60. Whoa, that was dodgy then. Yeah, let's stay inside view. That was dodgy then. Oh, this seems like a big station. We probably should have stopped here. I want to go back inside now. Yeah, we probably should have stopped here. Haywards Heath. Platform 3. This seems like a relatively big station, I'll admit. And it had a 12 car stop sign, so we probably should have stopped there, but oh well. Didn't think about it, don't really care. Not doing this realistically, as I said, just screwing around, having some fun. We're on a four, I was about to say a four track section there, and that was a five track section, now we're on a four track section. 
And I think, don't quote me on this, I think that unlike most tracks, which have like up fast, uh, down fast, up slow, down slow, when they have four tracks, this one is the slow tracks are on the outside and the fast tracks are on the inside, so it'll be like, if I show you the mouse, the slow track will be there for the slower trains and the freight trains. Then we have the fast track where we're on, going in the same direction. And then going the other way, you'll have the fast track and the slow track over there. I think that's fairly uncommon. I'm not sure. I probably could have described that better, I'll admit. But, meh, I'm not a linguist. Right, how far are we now? Oh, we've gone pretty far. We've gone fairly far. What's the next big station? I'm going to stop at the big stations. What's this? This seems pretty big. Balcombe? I think there was another one further up, wasn't there? Right, let's stop at Balcombe. What's this? That's a side in. Uh, ooh, yeah, we're stopping here. What's this? Three bridges. And... Gatwick Airport. Let's not stop at Hawley Hill. Let's stop at... Uh, nah, not that one. Not that one. I'm looking for busy tracks, stations. That one, yeah. Purley. And all of them after Purley, I reckon. So, oh, not going to stop in time for Belcombe. I keep putting the emergency brake on. Breaking strong for Balcombe. Never heard of Balcombe, gotta be honest. I think we're breaking a bit too strong there, so 60%. If that let's go down. Oop, wrong way. Uh, still getting used to these controls. It's gonna happen one day. Yeah, 33% seems about right. I'm surprised I can't see the platform yet. 0.3 of a mile away. In fact, breaks off. But why not? I'm disappointed. I wanted to see more traffic, like AI traffic, other trains. I'm a little bit disappointed that there's not. It's a bit of a shame. I thought I saw one then, but it was a raindrop on the window. Yeah, it'd be nice to have AI trains on all the routes. I don't see why they couldn't implement that. It doesn't seem very difficult to. I'm not a programmer. It probably is fairly difficult, but... Uh, if some routes can do it, why can't others? That's my uh, prophecy. That's probably not the right word, but meh. I don't have a dictionary at hand. Right, where should we start? Probably near the end of the platform would be the best idea. Let's just break here. Oh, there's a 12 car stop sign there, so let's stop there. So, break off. Wrong way. Come on, off and stop ooh that was pretty good not gonna lie that was pretty pretty good outside view the doors opening not on the first carriage why I don't know like seriously that is on the platform we had about five feet until the platform started to go down and the doors about ten feet along the carriage so why that couldn't happen I don't know Let's have a quick look at the interior, hop on the trip. Ooh, that's pretty nice. That's pretty well implemented. This material's the type of thing you would find on a train. A bit low graphics, but I can't blame them for that. This is a pretty nice interior. Let's hop off at Belco. And walk back down. Hello, hippie. She is definitely like an ex-hippie. Like, with a really weird jawline. Eh, not the best face. Uh, model but you know not the best model in general I'd say but she's a, definitely used to be a hippie like the hair band the way her hair is that jumper bit psychedelic the pattern that's probably the graphics though and look at those low cut jeans that was a bit too far look at that that is definitely hippie especially with those slippers as shoes oh I've lost where I am approved high visibility equipment Clothing must be worn when about to, when on or about the line. Do not touch the live rail. The live rail, in case you don't know, is this one on the outside here. That's where the train gets its power from. It's an electric train. Right, let's go. I don't care if the doors are shut. 
Go, go, go. Make everyone spill their coffee again. They're just like, poor Fred in the back. Ah, oh, I spilt my coffee at the last station. All right, I'll go get a new one. Rise at Belcombe. Ah, oh, I spilt my coffee again. Poor Fred. Shame. Fred's a lovely guy. <laughs> just made him up. Oh, well. Right, 90 miles an hour, full throttle, let's go. We've got a, a nice green light up ahead. This weather's a bit disappointing. I'd like a bit of rain outside, not just on the windscreen. You know, a bit inconsistent. It'd also be nice to have some thunder and lightning. I did choose stormy weather, not rainy. Oops, speed limit's going down to 80 in just over a mile. But yeah, this, this weather's a bit disappointing. It's still cool, the weather effect on the window's pretty decent. For a video game at least. But it'd be nice to see outside weather as well. It's like on some games, if you go on the cinematic camera, you'll just see the rain coming down on the car and like a little block around it. It's like, come on, surely you can make it so when you're an outside camera, it rains in front of the camera, not just on the car. I think, I'm not sure, I think this is where that tunnel was where they locked the top off. I think we go through here and then we go into it. I don't know. I don't know where it is, but I'll know it when I see it. I don't know why they locked the top off. Probably something to do with construction work nearby or something. I don't know. But they locked the top off on the tunnels and I'll point out when we get to it. Brighton up fast three bridges. Three bridges is our next stop if I remember. Yeah, it is. So through this tunnel. Not much to look at in a tunnel. Meh. And we pop out the other side. Oh, speeding. Just a, nah, kind of caught it, just missed it. So it goes down to 80 for this one corner, then back up to 90. I hate it when they do that. Why can't they just build the track so it's like 90 all the way around? Like, I know that some tracks are 100 years old and they didn't anticipate this speed, but it can't be that hard to straighten out a track a little bit. Even if it curves a little bit more around so it has to line up again or something. I don't know, it just, it's a bit stupid. Let's put the speed limit down for 200 yards, then put it back up to what it was. It's just, why? Why would you do that? Right, back up to 90 again. God, we're slowing down pretty quick, aren't we? Oh, that's three bridges coming up in the distance, so I may as well coast. What's the lowest brake set in? 33. That's not really what I wanted. Is there only three notches on the brake then? One, two, I can't see under the handle. If I floor it. Yeah, three in emergency. One, two, three. Three is eighty percent. Right. Okay. It makes sense. It does make sense. I'm just gonna coast nicely into the platform now. Not gonna apply any brake until we need to. Right, we're coasting down nicely, 0.63 of a mile away. I'm going to break 33%, lowest brake setting. Three notches seems a bit odd to me, I've got to be honest, because, like, you want a ride to be smooth, but if it's notched, then it'll jolt a little bit when you brake a bit more, it'll jolt the other way when you release the brakes a bit. It just seems a bit odd to have such an odd amount, like three. Like six or something like that, fair enough, because you wouldn't get as much as a jolt of a jolt. But three does seem a bit excessive. It's like, ooh, little bit of break, a bit more break, and you jolt forwards. And it just seems a bit more uncomfortable. I don't know if it is like that. Perhaps there's some kind of system, so there's a little bit of a delay between the brake settings or something. I don't know. I'm not a train expert. But it just, that would make a bit more sense to me. We came into this platform a little fast, but never mind. 33% break. I want to stop right at the end again. So let's get down to 15 and release the brakes. Come on, off. 
four car stop. Ooh, can this accommodate a ten car train? Yes, just. Ooh, didn't mean to change camera. All the way back through them. No, not gonna stop. Nah. Damn, missed it. Ah, well, doesn't matter. I'd probably get fired for that, but nah. If you if you are sat there, like, surely you can just walk down to that carriage. Like, that door, fair enough, you wouldn't unlock that one. But I don't see why they couldn't unlock that one, unless you can only lock them on specific carriages, not individual doors. I don't know. Oh, it'd be no so nice to have some trains fly through here any moment. But I'm pretty sure there's no AI on this route. Which sucks, I'll admit, it sucks. One click shopping, shop online. That is the most generic advert ever. Shop online. Not for us, just shop anywhere online. Oh, I can see rain outside now. Either I was completely blind er earlier, or it wasn't showing up. But I can now see the rain outside. Uh, it's probably me being blind, I'll admit. I am pretty blind when it comes down to it, but I don't know, I'm pretty sure. Let's go this view. Can I see rain? I can, it's just very difficult. I know, the rain needs to be a little bit thicker. That was quite difficult to see, I'll admit. So it was just me being blind, I'm pretty sure of that now. Oh well, doesn't matter. We're 20, uh, 30 miles away from London, Victoria. But at 90 miles an hour, that's like 20 minutes, if that. And it'll probably be a lot slower as we get into London, I would imagine. A lot of tight turns, old track, all that stuff. Right, we're coming up on Gatwick Airport. We are going to stop at Gatwick Airport. Because, you know, big tourist industry in London. Gatwick's one of the... I think it's the southernmost airport in London. There's quite a few airports in London. Gatwick, Luton, Heathrow, City, Stansted, I think there's another one as well. For one city, that's quite a lot. But then it is a tourist capital. Like, it's one of the tourist capitals of the world. A lot of people go to London, so... Yeah, swings and roundabouts, it's kind of to be expected. Right, I can already see the platform for Gatwick Airport. I wonder if there's a town called Gatwick, or an area. I, there probably is. I can't imagine they just go, hmm, what should we name this new airport? I know, let's make a random word up. It's probably named after something nearby, like a town or something. We may as well keep accelerating until we get a bit closer, because they are good brakes on this train. Not going to leave it to the last half mile, but I'll give it a bit of time to go a bit faster. Get these people there on time. Our ETA is just over half hour, 33 minutes. So... Yeah, I'd imagine a few speed changes coming up. Look at that, there's another, <laughs> there's another station, like, 0.8 of a mile down from Gatwick Airport. Hawley. That seems like another big station. I don't know if it is. Right, we're braking for Gatwick now. God, the brakes on this train are amazing. Even, we started braking, like, I think it was 0.6 of a mile out, and it's still slowing down too fast. Screw it, next station, I'm coming into it, at, I'm coming into the platform at 90, see if we can stop before the end. I think we're going to have to release the brakes. God, they're good brakes on this train. Yeah, we're going to have to release them. Jeez. That was unexpected. That was really unexpected. <clears throat> bit of a sore throat still. It's clearing up, it's clearing up. I know you guys are concerned about my health. Ooh, lovely detail in this station. Look at that, big overpass with fake windows. Go inside and everything disappears, fall through the floor. Ooh. Is this real? Oh, we got an AI train. Oh my god, that's a rare sight. In this game, wow, you must be mad. And we've completely missed our stop. Oh, God. Right, we're going for it. I give up. Oh, it won't let us. Come on, release the brakes. Uh, I know why. Outside view. God, that's annoying. That's really annoying. 
we missed this. We might as well just gun it. Pretend that didn't happen. No, we wasn't meant to stop at Gatwick. What are you on about? Nothing happened. We went flying through at 90. I completely missed that. I was just zoned out looking at the station. What the heck is that? What the hell is that? That doesn't seem like a very safe road. <laughs> I know, let's build, get a pool table and cover it in tarmac. That's basically what they did there. Look at those legs. I wouldn't support a road. And needless to mention, there's no barrier. If you lose control, you're falling 20 feet and landing on your roof. That doesn't sound particularly fun to me, so yeah, I don't think I'm going to be driving on that road anytime soon. <laughs> that was ridiculous. Like, seriously, this game's good detail close up, but some things are just like, what the hell? Like, occasionally you'll just get someone walking in the middle of the track, and it's like, dude, seriously, and it'll act like there's a platform there, so it'll be three feet in there, and it's just like, dude, you're floating over an active track go away, you're going to get killed. Some things in... Like, all video games have little bugbears which are a bit weird, let's be honest. Like, Grand Theft Auto, if you walk into a wall, you'll just run on the spot. You'd think they would have fixed that by now. But nope, you'll just keep running with your feet in place. It's just... Just all kinds of screwed. I used to love in Grand Theft Auto when you could drive your car into like a gate or under a tank, something moving like that, and it would launch you 50,000 feet in the air. That was one of the best glitches of all time. Like you just get a normal car, like a Sultan, drive it at a tank, and if you hit it right, you'll just get launched from the racetrack in, in the city all the way up to Pleto Bay, or land in the Alamo Sea or something. And it was absolutely brilliant that was. Those were the days. They've patched that now. I'm pretty sure they have. Which is a shame. That was a good glitch. That was a funny glitch. I suppose some people probably moaned about it though. Or Rockstar discovered it or something. Right. How far left? 25 miles. And now we're on the four track section. Uh, it's over there. I meant to go on the map. Right. We, you can see that we're getting into the busier part now. Like this is where stuff gets really busy. Look at all the tracks coming off in different directions. Look at this junction here. That is needlessly complicated. Does it really need to be that complicated? And this one here, like seriously. And then we get onto the main line, then we go onto another main line, which joins up to another main line. And then we split off again and go up into a station. It's needlessly complicated. Oh my god, we're speeding. And Coast down to 90, let's give it, I think, 62 accelerates it, yeah, so 39, sh yeah, that's, that's correct. Right, at some point soon we're coming up to that tunnel I was on about. I could have sworn it was further back than this. I know, I haven't driven this or anything like that in a very long time. But not that long, obviously, it came out earlier this year. But you know what I mean. A, few, a good few months, and I drove it, I think, twice. Once in each direction, so... It's kind of understandable that I'd forget these things, but I'm pretty sure it's around here. I don't know. I've said that a few times now. As I said, I'll know it when I see it. I will know it when I see it. There's a yellow light on that platform, which leads me to think there's another train coming behind us. Ah, uh, we need to slow down. We need to lop off 10 miles an hour. Oh, easy. Didn't even have to brake much. Ooh, yeah, we just caught it. Ah, right, where's this track going now then? There's a red light there. I think there was a track further back. Whoa, we're turning quite sharply. Into another, yep, yeah, there's a train. So there is actually AI traffic on here. It's just not very common. Nowhere near as common as real life where there's like a train every two seconds. Right, through this lovely tunnel. Brighton up fast quarry line. We're nowhere near Brighton, so I don't know why they'd call that specific part of it Brighton. I don't know. Perhaps that's just the middle of the track between here and between Brighton and London. Could be, could well be. Don't know, just guessing. Right, why are we, this train loses speed a lot. 
starting to get more populated now you can see that subtle detail you don't really notice it but we are starting to get more populated now and my frame rate has dropped down significantly because of all the buildings like we're getting 30 now still smooth enough to be able to play and everything so I'm not complaining about that yeah it's about 40 now yeah it's getting more populated because it has to load in all these houses there's factories so it's fair enough I don't mind we are definitely going through some kind of town or city now something along those lines where are we what's the next station uh, next station we're stopping at would be what's this pearly let's stop at pearly at the pearly gates I honestly thought the train would accelerate faster than that. We're going over a road here. I do like that, the way it does model roads with in the right place and things right next to the track. Like when I went past my house on the South, Me South Wales uh, Coastal, I think it's called, yeah, South Wales Coastal, there was a petrol station when we passed over a bridge on the right side and it, it was there in real life. It, obviously not the same brand, it, was, it wasn't branded properly. But that's, that's, they haven't got a license in for it, basically. But it is good how they have modelled things like that. I still want to know how they do it. I can't imagine they just send a camera down the track or something stupid like that. Like, I'd love to know how they do it. They must get a train company to let them sit in the cab or something with cameras and sensors or something like that. Either that or they use Google Earth and just try and model it as best they can maybe go on roads near the track to try and find out like take pictures of the track from bridges and stuff as I said I don't know that's guesswork entirely guesswork a lot of tunnels on this line I've noticed quite a few we've gone through three or four now I think and we're about halfway there coming out now green signal, we haven't had any signals to worry about last night, in another gully of some kind, oh speeding I knew that was going to happen nice little bridge, what is that next to it, oh more tracks I noticed that earlier, it seems like there's some kind of tracks paralleling us, oh ooh, I'm going to cross them now, yeah these tracks are paralleling us like, I don't see why they couldn't just join on. If they're going from one place to another, the same place, like why couldn't they just make it four tracks instead of uh, making an entirely new section of track for it? That's pretty odd. Yet more yellow lights. I think there's a train behind us on that set of tracks. Because I think they're the tracks that separated from us earlier. So I think there is another train behind us somewhere. It's, I'm so tempted to stop and see to let it pass by. But I'm not going to, and I can't, I'm not going to check the map either. I don't like spending too much time in the map, because then we don't get to look around. Bit repetitive on the houses there, I must say. It's just the same model with slightly different colour roofs. Oh, that's it, this is it. This is that tunnel I was on about where they knocked the top off. Oh, it's treating it like a tunnel as well, because we can't go outside view. But yeah, that used to be a tunnel, and for some reason or other... They knock the top of it off. Why? I don't know, but, you know. Where are those tracks gone? Oh, there they are. Are they going to join onto us eventually? Finally? Yep, here they are. Joining onto us by here. Oh, here's Pearly coming up. We God, this train slows down a lot. I think we're going downhill a little bit as well. So, one in 263 gradient, but I don't know if it's going up or down. I think it's going down. That's what they need. They need a little, just a little arrow symbol. There's another train. They need like a little, just like an arrow or something pointing up or down to let you know the gradient. That would be quite nice. Because it is hard. Like, I cannot tell if that's going up or down. We need to start braking. Like, it would be nice to know. Just a little tiny arrow symbol behind, like next to it on the right hand side. So it'd be like 1 in 263 down arrow can't be that hard that would be a nice little feature I reckon it is the detail that makes or breaks a game like would you really play Grand Theft Auto 5 a lot if it was wasn't detailed 
No, you wouldn't. If every wall was just blank, if every car was, I don't know, number plate or whatever, you wouldn't play it. It's the same with games like this. The detail is all the difference between, <clears throat> between like, a good game and a great game. A great game needs a lot of little details, like little Easter eggs. That's what I think, at least. Breaks off. In fact, let's keep them on. Just till we're down to 15. Coming into the station now. Right, let's take them off a little bit. Hope this station's long enough. It looks like it is. Pearly. I've heard of Pearly, but I don't know anything about it. Right, let's start breaking now. Just a lovely 20. As you know, let's go 39%. Oh, that's Accelerate. Ah, oh, you screw it, we're going. That's two stations in a row I've missed now. Damn, I was pressing it the wrong way. It turns out this is not a stopper service. Oh, wow. Yeah, you can change the points over there. That's pretty cool. I've got to do it, obviously. So, what points were they then? These ones. So, they're going left and right. And left and right. Got to have a bit of a play around with them. Back inside we go. Pearly Oaks, not going to stop there. South Croydon, we are going to stop. And then East Croydon after that, I believe. I think. Pretty sure it's East Croydon after that. God, my stomach's rumbling. I just had tea as well, which is odd. It's odd that my stomach's rumbling. I had lovely tea. I had, um, don't laugh, sweet corn, bacon grill and waffles. It was absolutely lush. Ooh. That is because our speed's going down. Like, you can call it baby food if you want, but bacon grill and waffles, absolutely lush. You can eat it any day of the week. It's like alphabetty spaghetti. No matter how old you are, alphabetty spaghetti is still pretty nice. I haven't had it for years, but it would be nice to have it. And turkey dinosaurs as well. Nom, nom, nom. <laughs> that was so childish. Wow. Right, we're st actually, I, no, the train's not going to fit on South Croydon, I don't think. Let's just go straight through to East Croydon, because I'm pretty sure, looking at the map, that that is not going to fit on these platforms. 10 car service. Let's just go straight into East Croydon, and then after that, Clapham Junction, and then London Victoria. That sounds like a plan. So we're going through these. Yeah, that's a pretty short platform. There's no way we would have fit. Yeah, we're, we're not fitting on there. So let's just go straight through here. And we need to slow down to 45. So let's slow down to about 50. And release the brakes. And it should coast down the rest. I might have to brake a little bit more. As you, yeah, because then it's 30 after that. So that probably means we're going to get a lot of AWS warnings. Not really surprising. I think we are going to coast down actually to 45, but then we're probably going to have to break a little bit to get down to 30. Yeah, I think we're just about going to make the 45 without breaking. But I'm going to start breaking anyway because we need to slow down to 30 and then stop at the platform. So we're going left. It looks like we're going. In yeah, we're going into platform one, the far left platform. Got a green light, which is nice. Right, must apply the brakes this time, not the accelerator. For the love of God. That was a, annoying, because I was coming in for a good stop then as well. And it's like, oh, I'll just start braking now, slow down, stop perfectly. Nope, goes flying off into the distance. Why not? Right, we need to start braking. I was going the right way then. Three and four car, six car. Probably going to have to go quite a ways down the station to stop for a 12 car. Let's slow down a little bit more. Right, there's 10 car and there's 12. So right at the end, basically. Actually, no, we are a 10 car. So anywhere about here would be fine. Come on. And stop. VT stop means virgin trains, I believe. 
because they use different trains or something. I'm not really sure. Come on, doors. Oh, it doesn't open in that view. Why? Why, train? Come on, Jesus Christ. No. Okay, the doors are broken, so beep, beep, beep. Everyone's getting off. Got to improvise sometimes. A little bit of role play here and there. The doors are actually broken completely. Don't know why. Don't know how. Don't care. That's a bit stupid, though. Message board has, doesn't have a very good level of detail. Like, nothing, nothing. Occasional yellow dot. Yellow lines. Dots. And then you can read it. That's not particularly brilliant. More vague adverts for online shopping. I'd love to shop at that stop. For a, shop at that stop. Shop at that shop, but there's no website, so I can't. That's a shame. Right, back inside we go. And beep, beep, beep. Doors are closing. Guard puts up that thingamajigger. Looks like a tennis racket to let us know we can go. And off we go. Probably don't need to go 100% throttle considering the speed limit is 30. About 40% throttle should be sufficient. Speed limit is going up to 45. This is where that really complicated junction was. I think there's like four different directions that trains can come from. Well, let's count them. There's one, two, three, four. Yep, yeah, four different directions and a depot right on the outside just for good luck. So yeah, that's a pretty complicated junction. God knows which route we're going to take. It looks like we're going far left. It's Selhurst depot that we're going past. We're not going to stop at Selhurst station. I just see no need for it. We are going to stop at Clapham Junction next. 30 limit if we're going right. We're not. We're going left. And let's start accelerating a little bit more up to 60. And we're just going to go flying through Selhurst. We're going to go over a set of tracks now. Let's go outside camera. So yeah, you can see just how complicated this set of tracks are. All that down there. Look at that. Wow. Oh wow, frame lag. The rain's getting heavier. Perhaps it wasn't raining earlier. Perhaps the rain just gets heavier now and again. I don't know, it could be. And this Selhurst depot on the side. We have a few trains in there. That's pretty good detail. I am... Oh, speeding. I used to own Trains 2006. And you can build stuff in it, like your own little station, your own route, your own map, whatever. And I tried to build that... Uh, junction before that's how I know a lot about it and my god was that difficult in trains 2006 there wasn't much to choose from in the way of assets you had to make do and that junction was just nearly impossible trying to get those bridges in when there's tracks going underneath them at different angles not going to stop at Thornton Heath or Norbury coming up but yeah that was damn near impossible I would not recommend that. I did manage to build a little bit of Marias Pass, which is actually a route I want to cover on you. I, as I said in the last episode, uh, last video, I was going to do an American freight route this time. I may well do it next time. I haven't decided yet. I, don't, I haven't found a good route. But, yeah, I, was, I am considering doing an American freight route. And I was going to do Marias Pass. I have covered it in a video before. It took 5 hours, 22 minutes. Like, obviously, I'm not going to do the entire route. Just little bits of it here and there. But yeah, that was pretty damn near impossible, that was. Like, what was I going to say? I've lost myself now, tr concentrating on that, tr on that train. I don't even think what I said makes sense, but yeah. I'm not going to do an entire length route because me yapping away for six hours, I don't think anyone wants to see that. Like, seriously. I, I might do it in sections in the future, but if I was going to do 
an American freight route, it'd just be from like one station to the next because they're pretty sparse, they're pretty spread out, and there's not much to look at along the way. So it'd be mainly mainly focused on the train. I'll try and find a good one. One thing I do want to do is the Pacific Surfliner in California, which runs down the coast from LA to San Diego. I'd love to do that route. Whether it's the whole length, I don't know. But again, that would need quite a bit of prep. I'd need like a few drinks to bring with me and stuff like that. So I don't know, maybe in the future. I'm gonna find a good route for next time though. We need to start slowing down for this 60 limit. You can definitely see now though that everything's building up. There's a lot more tracks and stuff. So we're getting into a populated part of London now. We're coming into central London. Coming to Balham. Balham's quite a big place but I'm not going to stop there as I said next stop Clapham Junction we've six tracks wide now coming into London and it's only going to get wider 60 limit we're doing less than in fact we can accelerate a little bit around 39% throttle lovely another little train over there I still need to get a thumbnail I always try and find a good place for a thumbnail. That was pretty nice then. Like there, maybe. Yeah, I like that. That's a pretty decent thumbnail. Yeah, let's use that. Now I need to zoom out because that is tripping me out. Is that zoomed out? That is. And I put the HUD back up. Uh, it, we're, I was going to say, we're speeding, but it's not showing on that we're speeding on the thing. Wandsworth Common, that's another big station, but I'm not going to stop there. I'm not going to break either, it'll coast down. I'm sure two miles an hour won't derail us. As soon as we hit 61, it'll stop telling us we're speeding. There we go. Quite a tight little curve that was then. Like, where are we? In relative to Victoria so we're coming up to there that junction then we're coming up to Clapham Junction that major train station busiest in Europe and then do a few turns and we end up in London Victoria so we're nearly there we're getting close now you can speed up again nice little bit look at that one station and then What's that? Less than half a mile down the track, another one. That's walking distance, like surely. That really is walking distance. I could walk that in ten minutes. No, probably five. The street I live on is over. It's almost exactly one mile long, and I've walked that in eight minutes before, so... That's a five, ten minute walk at most. That was an unnecessary train station. I just jumbled all my words together, but meh. Break a little bit, get us under the speed limit, then accelerate because we break too much. <laughs> God, I love it. Right, we're coming up to Clapham Junction in a mile. Like this, it's hard to put in perspective how busy this station is. How many platforms does it have? Uh, how do you zoom in? Right trigger. Forgot then. So, 17, but it gets a train every 13 seconds going through it. It's ridiculously busy. It really is. And then we go into a, a section which does have tracks everywhere, like it's basically track land. And then we break off, go on to a slightly less busy section, but busy nonetheless, into London Victoria, which is one of the major stations in London. Right, we should probably start braking now. I'm just going to give it 30% because these brakes are way too good. And we're joining on to the other set of tracks now. And then we're going to go straight into another set of tracks through the station. Right, here comes Clapham Junction. We are stopping here. That was actually a good brake level. We're stopping, slowing down at about the right amount. Maybe a little bit too fast, but I can certainly live with how fast we were slowing down then. Come into the station at about 25. Lovely detail in this game. Look at that walkway there. That really is nice. God, just, I, I do love this game. I gotta be fair. We need to break like hell. 
That was an emergency break, you son of a biatch. And we're breaking too soon. I panicked then. I thought I, I could have sworn I saw a 12 car stop sign. So I panicked, slammed the brakes on, went into emergency. I was outside camera, so I couldn't do nothing about it. I hate that. Why can't you work things in outside camera? It makes no sense. Right, open the doors. Are they going to open this time? Yeah. But yeah, look how busy this is. That is a yard in the middle at the back there. Look how long the walkway is for this station. It's massive. Absolutely massive station. It's so big I could actually use this as my thumbnail. In fact, you know what? I always like to get two just to be sure. Oh, we need to turn the hood off. Oh, we can do it from that camera view. Zoom in a little bit more. Yeah, like that. That is going to be my thumbnail. I'm pretty sure of it. I might change it. I don't know. Yeah, I, I like that. But yeah, it shows how busy this station is. We've got more trains over there coming in. That is a long train. That's like three different trains coupled together, but whatever. Right, back in, small HUD, and accelerate. I probably should have checked if the doors were shut. Oh my god, I probably just ripped Karen's leg off. I love naming random people. It's such a fun game to play. But yeah, I probably just ripped someone's leg off by accelerating with the doors open, but meh. I'm not getting paid for this. Not my problem. It's their leg, not mine. Oh, there needs to be more trains. Come on, dovetail. Let's hope Train Sim World has realistic traffic. But look at that. How, how thick is that? 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 tracks right there, ladies and gentlemen. We need to slow down a bit for this 45 limit coming up. That'll do. This is ridiculously busy, these tracks here. And this is where we curve off and go up and over. We need to just move the camera in a little bit. It's a bit too far out. And now we're getting into the high rises, more populated area. Frame rate's right there now, obviously. There's another train. Wonder where he's going. Underneath us, apparently. Not sure where those tracks go, if I'm honest. But yeah, this is definitely busy. Busy, busy train tracks. One thing that is cool about the traffic in this game is it's not only on your set of tracks. Like tracks which join on, you'll have trains coming through and joining on. Like a lot of games, if they get more than a certain distance away from you, they'll just despawn like that. Like, at least this game, it goes right. We join onto some tracks, let's spawn a train right there. Which, I, I like that detail. We need to accelerate a little bit. God, look how busy this is. Jeez. I've never been to London on train. I'd love to one day. But you can see how busy this is. In fact, I've never been to London since I was, since I can remember, let's put it like that. I went there when I was a kid with my brother and a seagull stole his donut. That was pretty funny. And I went there to watch because Newport, my local county football team, soccer team, whatever you want to call it, they, were, they got into the Champions League or something and they were playing at Wembley Stadium, which is a big stadium in London, West London, and we went to watch them a few years ago. But other than that, I've never been to London. I'll tell you a funny story about Brighton, where we came from. I think it was Brighton. It might have been Penzance. It was somewhere at the beach. But my cousin Katie, this was back in the 80s when everyone was just a kid, uh, she was annoying my dad at the beach saying, Dad, can I, Uncle Phil, my dad's name, can I have an ice cream? And my dad was getting really fed up. So he said to my cousin Katie, he goes, right, go catch a, a seagull and I'll buy you an ice cream. So she went off in a tantrum. About 10 minutes later, she came back with a seagull in her hand. <laughs> that's a brilliant story. I swear to God, that's true. That's like the folklore in my family. That's brilliant. Look at that, we're coming in at the same time as this train. Right, we need to, oh, we need to break. We need to drop 20 miles now. Yeah, that's a pretty funny story. Get my cousin Katie. She's just, 
my, my dad goes, right, go catch a seagull, and she caught a seagull. Like, fair play, she, she got that ice cream. Right, let's see if we can get a good picture with these trains side by side. That would be pretty cool. Yeah, let's move the camera up a bit. That's pretty cool. Probably not thumbnail worthy, but it's still pretty cool. Ooh. Maybe, just maybe. Come on, move, bridge. Mm. And we're stopping. Brakes are on, of course they are, because I'm an idiot and I forget to turn them off. Right, 20 miles an hour into the station. Shouldn't be a problem. I'm going to be extra cautious on this stop. I do not want to go over the edge of this st this platform because we'll derail and crash and kill everyone. Which is always fun, but not when I'm at work. Oh, changing track again for some obscure reason. Platform 17. God, it's a very big station this is. Can't really show you because we're locked to the inside camera. But yeah, this is a big station. Look at that. I think that's only half of it as well. I think there's half on the other side of that brick wall to our right. Right, but anywhere about here we can start stopping. I do want to get quite close to the barrier at the end. So, let's go about 10 miles an hour. And let's break a little bit more. The brakes wake... The brakes wake... The brakes make a weird sound in this train. 5 miles an hour. And... About here. Ooh, nice start. Oh, we can go outside camera. Open the doors if we can. Yep. Let all the people off. See if we can get to the other end of the train before everyone gets off. I want to get a good thumbnail. I doubt it. I think no. Well done, you've reached the end of this quick drive scenario. I know I have, I drove all the way, I drove, I drove all the way here. I'm not very good at talking, am I? I really aren't. Uh, it's weird, when I'm talking one-to-one -one with someone, I can talk all day long, not pronounce a single word wrong. When I'm recording or in a group, I just clam up sometimes. I used to have bad self-confidence though, so it's kind of fair enough, but I'm, I have got over it and I'm getting there. But anyway guys, that was quite a personal thing at the end. That's it for this video. Make sure you come back next time. Probably an American freight route. I will see you then. Peace out guys.